Okay, uh, this one, this paper add in arbitrary style transfer in real time with adaptive instance normalization is published in this conference. The authors are from uh, Cornell University. Introduction, uh, talk, uh, this is about the instance normalization and the conditional instance normalization for style transfer. We know for normalization layer, Layers, mm, batch norm or instance norm. They given the input x, they compute the mean, mu, or the standard V and the standard deviation of the x uh, for normalization. Then they have two sets of learnable parameters or two vectors of learnable uh, param parameters. One is gamma called the uh, scaling for the scaling, and the beta is the bias. <clears throat> so then uh, this is just for one style. So then for the conditional case with n styles, uh, they need n gammas and n betas for every style. So they predefine the uh, code book with, with several gamma and beta. Then given a specific style, they will select the uh, corresponding gamma and beta for uh, uh, for training and also for inference or generate or generation. Then uh, with this formula, we can rewrite it and we get get this one. So uh, clearly, we can see the relationship between between them. The beta of s is just like something of the mean of the s right and the gamma is like the standard deviation of the s so uh, the previous method uh, use the extra par parameters uh, gamma and betas to learn the mean of the final uh, to learn uh, to to try to learn the final mean and the final standard deviation of the s but we know in the uh, if we train the style transfer network, uh, we we need to rely on the style image, uh, and this this one is uh, because we from the X, uh, we want to generate the P, keep the content, but match the style of S. So the S uh, is just like also works like the anchor. <clears throat> it also works like the anchor. So. Uh, So here, previous methods they need they want to learn the uh, the extra parameters to uh, as the mean and the standard deviation. But because it's anchor, so we think uh, the normalization layer itself can learn the mean and the uh, stand standard deviation. And they they learn this one and they 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 can get the estimation of the mean and the estimation and the standard deviation they are accurate they are accurate through the uh, final final um, final results so then uh, so this is the method which means we don't need to use the extra gamma and the beta because uh, if we 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 give the s into the normalization layer. Uh, it can also get the mu and the, the standard deviation, and we think uh, the authors uh, find uh, they are accurate and the performance is uh, good. So the authors found the gamma and the beta are not necessary. The learnable gamma and the beta are not necessary because uh, they can represent uh, uh, they can replaced by the. Uh, stand deviation and the mean of the uh, style image. So the formula is this one. Uh, given the content image and the style image, and the in as input, we can get the st stand deviation of y, uh, get the mu of y, and we replace directly replace the gamma and the beta. So uh, the method is very simple, but uh, the funding is very no novel. And previous method, we need to predefine the n, right? We need to define how many styles in our training data sets. But for this case, 
uh, we don't need we don't need to predefine n. We, so it's for arbitrary style transfer. And the logs uh, are slightly different, but uh, most in most cases they are similar. Given the input, <coughs> we compute the output of the add-in layer as the t. And the input is uh, input is use the f the VGG encoder to get the uh, feature map of the content image and the style image to get the uh, feature map of, from both <clears throat> from them and get the T. Use the T uh, to match the generates. Here we, we need to train the generator. VGG, uh, the encoder. It, we don't need to train the encoder, but we need to train a decoder generator. So we so here we need to train this generator uh, and given the T into the generator, it will uh, generate the image and we go through the VGG or we get the output, then we directly uh, the authors directly uh, come use then use the distance between these two vectors as the uh, content loss. So uh, as the content loss to keep for measuring the uh, content difference, and for style, uh, they don't need to use they don't use the grand matrix. They find the, if they apply grand matrix, the performance is similar. So here uh, becomes slightly simple. They also after the activation function, uh, they also use the mu and the stand division uh, to compare the generated images and the style image uh, for the to compare the style the uh, the loss a new variant of loss this is the final results uh, compared to previous methods the speeds are comparable but the uh, previous methods need to predefine n and maybe it's uh, it should be limited, limited, uh, but this one uh, can be infinite. Okay. Uh, also, they can apply for the interpolation, given the uh this style. Let me see. Mm. This style they have uh the sigma and the mu of the uh this called y2 y2 this is the mu of y1 y1 uh sigma y1 and this mu3 then we can apply the interpolation between different y uh, namely different mu and this uh, sigma and uh, to generate to transfer the content image and we, we can show this one uh, and this is the linear uh, I'm not sure how they define uh, oh, how they define the alpha, uh, uh, but it's uh, something like linear combination or linear interpolation. Okay, so this is the summary. Uh, I think the paper is very simple. They just uh, we don't need we don't need extra extra parameters. We don't need extra learnable parameters for the uh, mean and the uh, standard deviation of y because uh, if we feed the y, uh, feed the style image into the uh, add in into the instance normalization, it can also get the uh, standard deviation and the mu. So we don't need this, we don't need extra learn learnable parameters. So uh, this is the summary of this paper.